take your seats. We're going to get started. I don't think we've ever had this many people at 8 a.m. Uh, at the Sondrager Symposium before, so that's a great sign. Great start to the day. Right. Well, uh, my name is Dan Truckee. I'm the director of the Bomir Upper Peninsula Heritage Center, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 23rd Sonderager Symposium here at Northern Michigan University. Uh, 23 years of incredible presentations that some of you, I don't know, has anyone ever been to all of the Sonderager Symposiums? It's kind of like Hiawatha. Russ has, because he started it. Uh, <laughs> I've been to most of them. Uh, and, uh, and it's always a great day of presentations, and we always learn something new uh, and, uh, and have wonderful speakers. Uh, I want to thank uh, members of the Sondrager family are here today. Um, this, this whole thing is made possible by a donation from the Sondrager family in honor of their father, Richard Sondrager, who is the head of the history department here at NMU. And we really appreciate that, making it possible to put this on so you could all have breakfast this morning and uh, have seats to sit in, but also some of the speakers who uh, we've, we're bringing from as far away as Washington, D.C. and Ottawa, Ontario to be uh, presenting today. So we really appreciate that. Uh, today, some of you may have seen the title for this year's Perspectives on 1820 and Beyond and wondered, well, what's such a big deal about 1820? And isn't, you know, shouldn't we have done that in uh, 2020? Well, 2020 was a different year altogether, wasn't it? Uh, didn't think of it in 2020 because I hadn't got here yet, uh, mentally. I, be, I was here already, but <laughs> mentally I hadn't got to 1820, and I regret that. Because uh, it was in 1820 that an event happened in the Upper Great Lakes that I think changed it for all time. And that was the expedition of Lewis Cass. Uh, who was the territorial governor of Michigan. And you're going to learn a lot more about Lewis Cass and the people involved in the expedition and, and also the impact that that expedition had on the Great Lakes in general and the formation of the state of Michigan uh, and eventually the state of Wisconsin, Minnesota, but most importantly, the settlement of this region uh, by people from the United States and other parts of the world. Uh, are, I like to say, in, in talking about this, people have asked, well, why is it so important? And I'm like, well, I, I am here because I'm a beneficiary myself of what happened after this expedition. My family came here from Canada, Finland, Germany, all these different places to live in the Upper Peninsula, to work in the mines, in the lumber industry, and in the railroad industry, and it's all connected to this, believe it or not, because this was the first official expedition to the United, uh, put on by the United States to the Upper Great Lakes region. I'm gonna talk a lot more about that in my presentation. Um, I just wanna show you this map to get it started. This is a map that was created by Henry Schoolcraft in 1821, showing the journey they took. The red line is the actual line of the journey, which started at Detroit and worked up the coast of Lake Huron, up the St. Mary's River to Sault Ste. Marie, across Lake Superior all the way to the end of the lake where Duluth is now, and then all the way up to what we now call Cass Lake, which they believed was the uh, source of the Mississippi River. It wasn't, and Schoolcraft would uh, later figure that out 12 years later. And then down the Mississippi River all the way to the Wisconsin River, and then back up the Wisconsin River to the Fox River to Lake Michigan, down to what is now Chicago, and then back, though Cass went across land on his way back. 
They did this journey in five months by canoe, which is an incredible feat in itself. Uh, and it says, it says a lot about what they were trying to do. They didn't have time to stop and really appreciate a lot of what they were doing. They were there to claim it. And this is all now in our ex exhibition at the Beaumier Center. So if you want to learn more about the expedition itself, that's where you're going to go. I hope if you have time today, if you take some time off from the sessions or if you want to come back in another day, the exhibit's up through uh, January 27th. And we called the exhibition Claiming Michigan because that's really what this was about. This was not a journey of discovery. Nothing that they saw hadn't already been seen by generations of Native Americans, generations of French voyageurs and traders, British fur traders, and other Americans involved in the fur trade or just exploration. This was a journey of claiming, of saying, this is ours now. This is the United States. And unlike the French and the British, the, the Americans wanted to settle it. They wanted to exploit it. The French and the British were mostly interested in the fur trade, that form of exploration or exploitation. In the case of the French, they were also interested in saving souls. And the British did that as well. The Americans wanted to create something new. They wanted to expand. And expanded did. And it's the reason why I'm here. It's the reason why many of you are here today is because of what happened after over the next 100, actually not even that, the next 20 years, the next 30 years, 100 years, and now 203 years. So I felt it was a great time for us to take stock of that. Who were these people? What were their motivations? What was here before? Or what did we know before? And what was the lasting impact that it had on this region, both positively and negatively? So that's what today's uh, symposium is all about. 